Okay, a legal problem called binary tree maximum path sum. So path in a binary tree is a sequence of nodes where each pair of adjacent nodes in the sequence has an edge connecting them. A node can only appear in a sequence at most once. Note that the path uh, does not need to pass through the root. Um, the path sum of a path is the sum of nodes values in the path. Given the root of a binary tree, return the maximum path sum of any path. So you can see that we don't have to pass through the root, and that basically means that we don't have to, the path doesn't have to start at the root, and the path doesn't have to end at the leaf node, right? Like if I have a binary tree like this, this can be one path, right? Or in this case, this can also be a one path, right? If this, is, if this has another node, right? Has another children node in this case this can also be a one path as well right it doesn't have to start at the root doesn't have to end at the, at the leaf node um, and you can also see that this can also be a path as well right and this path have to be one directional um, basically means that you can only go one path like go like one one direction um, you cannot be like this for example like this right like coming back to here this is not one this is not one directional you can see this is basically two path right um, so in this case, we're basically trying to find the maximum path sum. So you can see we have the example here. And uh, in this case, we have a maximum sum of six. So we have two plus one plus three. Um, we can try with one plus two or one plus three, right? But they will only give you um, not the maximum sum, right? Um, another example like this, for example, um, you can see we can, the maximum path sum is 15 plus 20 plus 7. Um, in this case, this will give us 42, right? You can also try with negative 10 plus 20 plus 15 or negative 10 plus 20 plus 7, right? There's many combinations that we have. Um, so you can see the maximum is basically 72, right? Oh, sorry, uh, 42. So you can see the constraints that we have at least one node in our tree and the constraints that we can also have negative values in our in our nodes, right? So how can we be able to solve this problem? Solve this problem, I think is very important to come up with all the combinations that we can come up with, right? So you can see that for this subtree, let's say we're, we're talking about this subtree right here, right? 20, um, what are some combinations that we can try? Like what's, like how can we be able to figure out what's the maximum path sum for the current subtree? Okay, well, what we can do is we can say, one path could be the parent plus the current node's value plus the left subtree, right? Plus the maximum path for the left subtree, of course, right? Uh, so that will be parent to the current nodes plus the left subtree. And we can also do parent plus the current nodes plus the right subtree. We can also do is, we can do this, right? We can do left path sum plus the current node's value plus the right path sum. And we can also do is, we can just go for current node's value plus the left path sum, right? or the current notes value plus the right path sum, or just current notes value itself, right? So you can see that we cannot, can be able to come up with six combinations and for each and every single combination, we get a sum um, and we figure out who has the largest value. Whoever has the largest value will be the maximum path sum for the current, uh, for the current position, right? Um, but the thing is, you can see that this is really unnecessary, right? You can see those two are really unnecessary because we're just trying to figure out the maximum path sum for the current subtree. Right, and then we can try to go from the bottom to the top and working our way up, and we don't have to really figure out okay, who what's the maximum path sum for the parent? You know, try with all those two combinations because we will at, re, at the end we will return back to the parent and say the maximum path sum for the current subtree is this, and then in this case for the root level, right? We know that the maximum path sum is nine, the maximum path sum is thirty five, right? And then we can try with same thing. We can try with all. Uh, for remaining combinations, right? We can either try this way, we can either try just this path or just this path or just current notes value itself, right? So you can see that we're only left with four combinations now. And you can see that those four combinations can also sum up together into one, right? You can, because in this case, like I mentioned before, this is returning nine, this is returning 20, right? So you can see that we can have nine plus negative 10 plus 20, right? But in this case, this will always give us the maximum value, right? If I just say negative 10 plus nine, this will not give us the maximum value. But the thing is that there could be also negative value as well, right? If I have negative 20 here, right? If I have negative, forget about this subtree right here, right? In this case, if I just have negative 20 returned back to the root, 
right? I don't want to include this because in this case, it will always bring the sum, right? The value of the sum down, right? So what we can do is that if I'm returning back to the root, um, I will compare to see whoever has the maximum value, either zero or the maximum value, right? Zero basically means I'm not including the, the, the sum, the maximum path sum for the right subtree, right? And same thing for the right, uh, sorry, for the left. In this case, I can, in this case, include zero or sorry, include the left path sum or just don't include it, which is basically zero, right? So you can see that these are four combinations is either um, the current node's value itself, right? If both of them are negative value, then I'm not including any path. So that's one combination. Or if one of them is bigger, for example, is nine, nine is bigger than zero. So we including the left subtree, right? Or in this case, for the right subtree, if in this case, if, um, right, if this is positive value and this is negative value, then we're only including the right subtree, right? And there could also be a situation where both of them are positive. If both of them are positive, we're including both subtree, right? So you can see those are all four combinations that we have to try, right? And at the end, for each and every single subtree, right, we have to compare who has the maximum path sum. So we're going to have a maximum variable that keep track of the maximum path sum uh, throughout the bottom, right? So we, let's run through an example here. So for this subtree, we know that the left is and the right is zero. So in this case, the maximum path sum is 15. So we're going to update the maximum path sum to from infinity, from negative infinity, right? To positive 15, right? And same thing here, we know that seven, the maximum path sum is seven. Seven is not bigger than the maximum value. So in this case, we're not going to update the max. So we return back to the parent, say the maximum path sum is this value, right? So in this case, what's gonna happen is that for this uh, node, we will try to figure out the maximum path sum for the current subtree, and then we will make sure to update that for the max, right? So the maximum path sum for the current subtree um, is, in this case, is 15 plus 20 plus seven, right? Which is basically 42. So we make sure we update the maximum path sum because it's bigger than the max, right? Okay, so then uh, we're going to return back to the root saying the maximum path sum for this subtree is basically 35 because like I said, again, we cannot include, this is basically one directional, like we cannot do this, we can only return just the maximum path sum for one branch, right? Is either this one, right? Or is either this one, right? So in this case, we're returning 35 because we have 15 plus 20 plus, right? Which is basically 35. And then for the left subtree, which is kind of obvious, we're returning zero, uh, nine because this case is a leaf node. And this is basically the maximum path sum is just this node itself, which is nine. So in this case, we have nine plus 35 and they're all positive value, right? So in this case, we're including both nine plus 35, which is basically 44, right? So we have 44, but we have negative 10 here, right? So in this case, if I have negative 10, it's basically 44 minus 10, which is just 34. And this maximum path sum is 34, right? So you can see that we cannot just like um, ignore the left path or the right path because they're all positive value. They're all bigger than zero. So if it's bigger than zero, we must include the, the path sum for that path, right? So you can see that this is basically how we solve the problem using um, kind of like a post order traversal. We wanna know the left subtree's path sum, the right subtree path sum, then we'd be able to compare or understand what's the maximum path sum for the current subtree. And then we're going to return the maximum path sum for this branch back to the root and to make a different decision, right? So you can see this is our code. We have a maximum variable um, to keep track of the maximum path sum. Base case is that if the root is null, we just return zero, right? So if the if leaf node, if the left is null, or the right is null, then we basically return zero for the left max and the right max, right? And you can see the left max, in this case, we're doing a DFS to search on the left. If it's negative value, we just don't, we just don't include it, right? We just don't include it in our path sum to calculate our path sum, right? We just set it to zero. And same thing for the right. Now we update the max. In this case, the max is either max itself, right? Or it's just left, ma left max plus the right max plus the root of value, right? Uh, at the end, we're returning one branch, just like I mentioned before. Um, is either right this right or this right it's either the right subtree or sorry it is either the right subtree plus the current nose value or the left subtree plus the current nose value right so you can see that we're ensuring just only one directional right not 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 like this 
right? So that's how we basically solve the problem. And you can see the time complexity, whoops, sorry. The time complexity is basically um, big O of N, where N is number of nodes that we have in our tree. And the height is basically the space complexity. So there you have it, and thank you for watching.